and welcome to this week's edition of Political Capital. This is your intersection of money and politics. I'm Karabole Tata. The big story of the week, a story so big, it forced an African president to cut short his UK visit and his tea with the Queen to come back home to put out the political fires and political satire in the shape of one Chester missing. Finally, it's a big week for the EFF, and I sit down with his leading light, Dalim Pofu. But first up, your newspapers. To start off this week, Muyani versus Ramaphosa, a story we've been covering for weeks here on Political Capital about the embattled, suspended SARS bus Tom Muyani. Business Day understands that prior to his ousting, Moyani had turned down two settlement offers and replied to a third with conditions of his own, which were subsequently rejected by the president. It is understood that Moyani's conditions had included that Ramaphosa hold a media briefing to which he, Moyani, would be invited and announce their amicable parting of ways. Then... Guptas, yet again, Guptas' bulletproof luxury SUVs tucked away as questions swirl about the brothers' fate. Infinity Melrose confirmed that the QX80 was outfitted with category B6 armour plating, sufficient to withstand fire from an AK-47 assault rifle. Short of an attack from a high-powered rifle and dedicated armour-piercing rounds, the occupants will be safe from most forms of fire. Together, the two vehicles are worth an estimated 5 million rand. Then to the unrest in the northwest province of South Africa, ANC will tread carefully to quell unrest in the northwest, so says the Mail and Guardian. We have to tread carefully on the issues that have been raised. We know that the issue of corruption were uppermost in the minds of the people and that there's a lot of corruption, so says Obed Bapela the member of the NEC of the ANC. And still on the Northwest violence, it only serves enemies of transformation. So says Sil Ramaphosa at the funeral during his eulogy to Zola Squia. We can be certain that Zola Squia would have been concerned about the violent protests that have seized the Northwest in the last few days. Like the violence that he confronted in the early 1990s, such violence can only serve the interests of those opposed to transformation and the progress of our people. So says President Sil Ramaphosa. And to find out at street level what's at the core of the protests of the Northwest, political capital went out to talk to the people. President Ramaphosa cannot just cut this trip short just to come and bring water in Mafiki. He's going to remove Supra Mahumapi. Because if Syria does not remove uh, Supra Mahumapi, I'm going to be arrested for being in Zirast. Sound and fury. The end of patience. A people at the end of their tether. The violence that gripped Mahigang in the northwest province spilled onto the streets. Frustrated and tired, Northwest residents blame the lack of basic services like health and water, and they want their Premier gone. They say it's his fault. Northwest Premier Supra Mahuma Pelu is a man in a very tough spot with loud opponents. Things got so bad it forced the President of the Republic, Cyril Ramaphosa, to cut short his trip to the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting and his high tea with the Queen of England. He flew back home early to attend to the burning issues. It was a long fuse that burned for a month. A strike by the National Education, Health and Allied Workers Union, or NAHAO for short, saw a shortage of medical supplies across the province. It sparked the flames of protest and allegations against the Premier. Subra Mahuma Belu is facing a myriad of allegations, including corruption and maladministration. Mahuma Pelu became the Premier of the Northwest Province on the 21st of May 2014. Barely a term in office, they want him out. 
seen as a Zuma loyalist, Mahuma Bilu's government splurged 1.8 million rands on a statue of President Jacob Zuma in 2017. He was also linked to the controversial Gupta family and defended their lavish Sun City wedding, paid for with government money in 2016. The allegations rose to a crescendo of violence that led to this. Here, a cement truck was captured and people looted it. The capital city became a ghost town. Businesses paid a heavy price, crowned by broken glass and burning tires. This chorus of protest was growing. Nearly 70 kilometers away from the capital city of Mahigeng, in the otherwise sleepy town of Zirast. Currently, as we are speaking, the hospitals, the clinics, uh, the health facilities, the health centers have been closed and families have been told to go and collect their patients uh, all over. I mean, it's not a nice thing uh, where, where, where uh, members of communities have been told to go and co collect their family members from di different hospitals. Supra is the premier of the Northwest and he's the chairperson of the ANC in the province. He must provide leadership. I mean, the MEC for Health reports under Supra Mahumapir. He holds executive committee meet, uh, 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 cabinet, provincial cabinet meetings where these people account to him. He is part of this corruption that is taking place in the, in, in the Northwest. He's not directly involved, but he uses uh, stooges, which he appoints as chief directors, directors and municipal managers in different municipalities to pursue his corrupt activities. My final question, so what if Cyril Ramaphosa can't solve this? What if he can't shift Supra? What are you going to do? I, 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 we, are not, we, are not, we are not going to backtrack. We will continue up until uh, Supra is removed. If it's not removed today, it's still going to happen tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, up until it's removed. At the end of the day, the ANC political process seems to have doused the fires and contained the anger led by President Ramaphosa. But Friday's lack of decision by the ruling party shows the first round went to Mahuma Bilu, who for now remains Premier of the province. What next? There's another side to the hard political stories, and that is political satire. And nobody does it better than Chester Missing. Chris Bishop, discuss politics. Big story of the week was uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa flying back from London to quell unrest in the Northwest province. I know, it's amazing that he flew, uh, he flew southeast to get northwest. It's very strange. But, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm amazed by... Let's start with Ramaphosa's, you know, his political strategy. I mean, this guy is flying a lot in economy. And, and people think it's because he's a good guy. No, it's because he is the, the same height as I am. For So economy is business class. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is, um, you know... I, he, he's got this uh, thing that he's trying to change what's going on in Northwest. He can't. Supramahom Pelo is basically the CEO of Northwest. He is so Gupta, he might as well be a wedding. I mean, he's, if, you, if you were, did you, you were at Nazarek, of course. I was at Nazarek, yeah. Yeah, because at Nazarek, uh, you know, Supra was trying to back up Ace when Ace Magashule, the uh, premier of uh, the Free State, although he might not be, we'll never know. Nobody knows what Ace is. But what do you think of overall of Sir Ramaphosa's start, his, his clampdown on corruption, his clean-up of the economy? What do you think of that? I think it's scaring a lot of people. I mean, Praveen Gordon is in charge of the parastatals. That is chaos. I mean, finally, uh, uh, Jacob Zuma was always scared of Praveen because Praveen looks like P.W. Boto with a tan. But, I mean, he's, he's you know, Sir Ramaphosa means business. And people are excited about it because I was at, at State of the Nation, of course, and I saw a squirrel Ramaphosa. This is not a joke. I really saw a squirrel Ramaphosa. Journalists looked down and went, squirrel Ramaphosa. That would never happen during Jacob Zuma's time. He would have elbowed you and kicked you out and got married to you. And, um... What, uh, mm. what do you think might be the legacy of these early years of uh, Sir Ramaphosa? You think he's got the staying power? Uh, he does, but I've got to just say that you have a subwoofer in your throat. You avoid... <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Uh, you know, he does have staying power if he doesn't get stabbed in the back. I mean, he's basically got Ace Magashule and DD Mabuza and Do Jesse Duarte in his line. I mean, that's not a top six. That's a prison lineup. I mean, DD Mabuza shut down Bushbuck Bridge, you know about the story of course Bushback Bridge a town voted against D.D. Mabuza and then he shut them Cape Town had a drought and lost water Bushback Bridge had D.D. Mabuza I don't know how they're gonna survive it's it's rock and roll I mean this is a guy getting poisoned and going with the Guptas to, to Russia I don't know you know
What about uh, the Zuma trial? Let's ah, the Zuma trial. Yes, the perennial Zuma trial. Give me my day in court in 2095. Uh, you know, well, you know, Jacob Zuma. You can't get hold of the guy when you phone him and the answering machine goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. San Banani reached the Zumas and fought in the Jacob Gertrude Nompolalelo to Beckham Shilozi Gugu Tuli Tuti Narisi Kobile Edwards and Ono Tantikile and Nonkolaleko are all in the shower so you can't get hold of the guy second of all he has the worst legal advice in history it is I mean I don't know what his lawyer is doing but it's clearly got something to do with Flaka what would be your advice to him in these difficult times Jacob Zuma Jacob Zuma well run just run no I'm joking just like <laughs> Go get a, a, a visa for Dubai. I don't know how he's going to get out of this. I mean, the guy is so corrupt. There is no example of what's more corrupt than Jacob Zuma. He's like a walking home affairs. What about um, also Julius Malema may be facing court at the hands of Kheri Nell? I know that's very exciting. Very, very exciting. Uh, you know, uh, it's a complicated thing because it's, in South Africa, politics is a sport. And now we've got basically the uh, Liverpool is playing Man United. That's basically what's happening there. It's the Afrikaans right wing versus uh, the, uh, you know, t a technically black left wing. So what's going to happen? I mean, can you imagine? Kheri Nell was the, in the Oscar trial. You remember that, of course, Oscar. Is in jail now because he couldn't see he was in a toilet and in jail he can see he was on the toilet all the time. So, um, Kheri, you know what's going to happen? It's going to be a circus and Kheri's going to come out and say, uh, uh, he's going to say, uh, I put it to you. That's what Kheri says in court. We saw you. I put it to you. And then Julius is going to go, what are you putting to me? The land. So, um, and uh, there's many other stories coming. We've got an election coming next we year. We do. It's very so exciting. Who do you think is going to win? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think it's going to be the first closely contested election in the history of this country, I think. Well, I think that we might get a win where uh, the DA and the EFF form a coalition to out the ANC. They're going to call the government F to ANC. <laughs> And That's uh, an EFFDA joke. Do you think Cyril's got enough to cling oh, on to power? I don't think he understood the joke. Uh, Cyril, uh, no, well, no. He's, all he's got is a buffalo and McDonald's. He doesn't have enough. I mean, did you see when he won? Did you see his face? He, would cry, he cried twice. He cried twice. Chris, he cried when he won. And he cried when he found out he's getting DD Mabuza. I mean, he's got the power, but he can't do anything with it. It's like having a bath in Cape Town. You got it, but you can't. It's like winning the lottery, but you have to spend all the money at Joshua Door. It's not a freaking thing. It's a very difficult position the guy is in overall then finally i mean what sort of hope do you have for politics uh in this country in this country uh well you know the world is like this america's got its second president of color orange is a color uh you know so we have to understand us within a global context you know, the macroeconomic situation was looking you know we had a company called standard and poor telling we they can't trust us you're called standard and poor go away uh you know so it's a I think the opt people are optimistic because there's, there's some kind of uh, responsibility being taken. The hawks suddenly have woken up and realized that they're not ducks. Um, you know, so we have Sean Abrahams, my second favorite puppet, who's got the same eyebrows as I do, is starting to act like he has a backbone because for a while he was a jellyfish. So I, I, you know, I'm optimistic, to be honest. I mean, if anything shows the state of South African politics, it's the fact that you are busy talking to a puppet about it. But you're not going to up and leave the country anytime soon. Me? Uh, no, but I live in a suitcase, so my life is very, very awkward. I have a hand in my ass. I'm, I'm not sure if... But you work at CNBC, you know what I mean. Thanks a lot. Pleasure. Cheers. Time for a short ad break, but when we return, one of the leading lights of the economic freedom fighters, advocate Darling Pofu. To political capital your intersection of money and politics i recently sat down with one of the best known names in politics advocate Dalim pofu to discuss everything from coalitions leading up to the 2019 elections as well as a case leveled against julius malema here's more what is the EFF's official response to this? Because I saw Julius Malema's tweet following the announcement of mm -hmm. this would-be private prosecution, you know? And and he calls a free forum racist, that he is ready, that he is 
uh, his destiny will not be decided by mm. a clandestine group of white mm. leaders, but mm. it will be decided by the masses. Mm. As a movement, do you just see this as a consequence of the time of the rhetoric around land and all the, call it unfashionable stance to the Afri Forum that has brought us here? Yeah, it's a knee-jerk reaction. They, don't, they basically just don't know what to do. Mm. They, they, they're stuck you know, in the old racist mentality. And um, I mean, we yesterday we uncovered the plot to assassinate Malema. A day later, you, you get something like this. All these things are related. They simply don't know what to do. Uh, they think that the problem is Malema, but the problem is not Malema. The problem is they want to shoot the messenger. Mm -hmm. But the message is not going to go away, whatever they do to Julius to Malema. And that's really our message to them, to say, well, uh, you want to give us an opportunity to organize rallies and uh, actually what they're doing is the opposite of what they intend to do because they're now galvanizing black people to say we're now under attack. Uh, the people who speak on our behalf, who speak our language are under attack. So let's consolidate and fight back. And nobody wants that. Actually, our land call, mm -hmm. you know, on a serious note, should be seen if, if our white compatriots had any sense of occasion. Instead of this up and down and then throwing the toys. They should be saying, look, it looks like the, there's a serious issue around this land thing. Why don't we create the dialogue, which is what we said in Parliament. Let's create the dialogue. It's not going to go away. You know, the uh, land question has to be addressed. The time has come historically after 360 years for this issue to be addressed one way or the other. It's not going to disappear. You can kill us, you can do this. It's not going to disappear. There are allegations against the commander-in-chief that stem from his time in Limbobo through the On Point mm. uh, company that he owned. Mm. I'm sure he is also interested in clearing his name, especially because people look at this from the outside and they will mm. say, Julius, you called for the prosecution of the president. Mm. Surely you should want to clear your name, want your day in court. Does the CIC want his day in court over these charges? But he had his day in court. The state, I mean, Afroforum is, is, is just a, 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 a nuisance, really. Okay. The state, no less than the state, uh, brought these charges. They, we went to court. The CIC never once, unlike all these people, never said, don't take me to court. Mm -hmm. Whenever they charge him, he was there in court in the morning at 8 o'clock waiting uh, for the charges to be brought. And they failed. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not, there's no question of, of, of dodging uh, the, the consequences. Anybody, anybody, you or me or AfriForum, who, ha who thinks that they can invoke the mechanisms in the law mm -hmm. to have a successful prosecution, bring it on. But the NPA itself is saying, is conceding on some level to the fact that there was an inavailability of witnesses and that they still uh, are making the decision and that they will most likely announce a decision between now and, and August this year mm. on whether or not they're going to charge him. Is it likely to become a political case if the NPA charges him? I mean, it's very No, clear charging can never be political. Before. There's nobody who's above the law. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can't say the mere charging is political. Mm. If they have a case, then they must bring it on and we'll deal with it. But if they have a, a case that is politically motivated or is, is seeking to achieve other ends other than those that are prescribed in our law, we will obviously deal with it. But we can't, there's nothing we can do. If mm. they charge me tomorrow of rape or whatever, I have to go to court and show that I did not rape anybody. That's the law. There's, no, there's nothing to be worried about. I mean, this is just all nonsense. I'm going to finish off by going to the politics of land. What we've seen is that the African National Congress, at least in Parliament, have supported the amendment of Section 25 of the Constitution, mm. which will go deeper into Parliament's uh, procedures as we discuss what property rights are. Really. But do you feel that the ANC is really sincere in this call for land redistribution? Or do you feel like this is a ploy that they're using for the 2019 election and firmly to steal some of the young voters that you have as the EFF? Mm. No, the ANC is not sincere at all. I mean, the ANC does not believe, uh, particularly this current uh, liberal leadership under Ramaphosa. The, you can even see the body language when he talks about land. It's like he's going to collapse and die. Yeah. 
No, they're not sincere. Uh, but they were not sincere even in passing the resolution. The only reason they passed the resolution is because we've been putting sustained pressure on this question. And again, the same message to them, the issue is not going to go away. Mm -hmm. They're already making noises now to say, yeah, well, it looks like the land redistribution can be addressed without changing the constitution, which is absolutely nonsensical. So we're going to mobilize uh, society and use um, intellectual arguments um, to show that these people uh, are not sincere. They don't want, they want to waste another 25 years uh, standing in the same place, if not moving backwards. But it's the, ultimately, it's our people who, who are going to give answers to this through their vote, through uh, what happens. Uh, for example, the reason why the ANC is moving on this at all is because electorally we gave them a, a, a hiding in the, in the elections in 2016. So as you correctly say, they are hoping to regain that lost ground. Mm -hmm. But people are not stupid. I mean, if you are not sincere, they're going to see through you within a, a reasonable uh, time mm. and they're going to put people in parliament who are going to pursue their agenda. Mm. Mm. I recently had a chat with the PAC and I'm going to ask something that I asked them of sure. you. In this, you know, South Africa where we have over a hundred political parties who vie for elections come the time, mm. shouldn't we be thinking about consolidation, especially as our politics get even closer and closer? The PAC has always been about land mm. and the EFF has been about land since mm. its foundation as well. Mm. Don't those kinds of politics and the, the convergence of ideas give us room for consolidation? Yeah, there should be consolidation, but the consolidation should not be based on skin color or things like that. It should be ideological. If we believe in the same thing, then we should uh, be in the same place. The EFF is a big believer in that. I personally, within a few months of the EFF being formed, there's not a single political organization in this country that I did not visit and talk about the question of uh, joining forces or working together. The PAC was the first one that and I visited. what kind of reception did you have there? No, we had a very good meeting. We met with a, a top leadership. We even invite, you might remember that at our 2014 launch of our manifesto, Present there were the PAC, Azapo, mm -hmm. um, the BC movement, and all sorts of um, organizations. And uh, our door is still open for that. But you know, some people want to hold on to positions and, and so on. So mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of dynamics. Mm -hmm. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. But yeah, our belief is that uh, like-minded people, but we don't want to unite for, with people just for the sake of uniting. Mm. If they believe in a socialist future, if they believe in a state-led uh, solution to the problems of South Africa of inequality, um, and they believe in uh, black solidarity uh, and, and, and all pan-Africanism, anti-corruption, uh, nationalization, expropriation of land, broadly speaking, mm. then they're at home. And, and in any event, we do have, in the EFF, I think it's the only organization now where you can find all those streams. You'll mm. find people who come from a PAC background, obviously the majority come from an ANC background, people from a BC uh, background uh, all have a home in the in, in the EFF. Yeah. You spoke about a state-led solution, you know, to some of the challenges that we're seeing here. And the EFF is in the main supported by a disenfranchised youth in this country a youth that is looking for more than rhetoric but is looking for for real hope mm. tangible hope about their future that mm. they're also part of the narrative mm. as we move forward mm. as a society what do you what do you tell that youth that is still disenfranchised as you campaign towards the 2019 mm. I would tell them the same thing that we've told them before, the same thing that has made them to support us. There are many young people, um, and it's not only the disenfranchised uh, poor youth, by the way. We have huge support. Uh, the polls show that we have huge support, for example, even in the black middle class um, across the spectrum. And um, that's because the message we was, was saying is to, is to demonstrate that this solution, mm. quote unquote, that is provided by organizations such as the ANC and the DA, the neoliberal approach to 
to the solutions of, uh, or rather to the problems of South Africa will never work. It's just doomed to fail. It's just a waste of time. Mm -hmm. it, there is not a chance in hell that the market mechanism and capitalism will ever resolve the problems of this country. It's never going to happen. We're going to be moving around the same place for the next hundred years if we, if we do that. Because the problems of this country were created by colonialism and apartheid. Apartheid was a, a state mm. interventionist system. Mm. You can't undo problems created by state intervention by prayer or, or by uh, hoping that the market is going to f fall down mm. and resolve mm. your problem. It's madness. It's complete madness ideologically. And more and more people understand that you have to do that. You have to intervene. Mm. You have to redistribute the land. You have to make sure that the, the, the minerals, which belong to all of us, find a mechanism to make sure that we all benefit from those minerals. Is the EFF still growing or have you plateaued? No, we are growing by leaps and bounds. I mean, the, that, that question doesn't even arise. Mm -hmm. We had an election in 2014. Mm -hmm. We had another election in 2016. In 2016, the only party that grew was the EFF, mm -hmm. the only party. And it's all there. It's, uh, it's science. It's not uh, wishful thinking. The uh, ANC lost something like eight or so uh, percentage. Sure. Yeah, the DA lost them, I think, about two or three percent. We were the only party that grew. And that makes sense because we appeal to young voters. Mm -hmm. We appeal to a broad spectrum of uh, uh, the population. But we're in no hurry. As I say, if it takes 50 years or a thousand years what we're not going to do is to give up the legacy of uh, of our people mm. uh, simply to be mesmerized by stupid things like BEE that uh, will never get anywhere. I mean, where have you ever had a majority of the people who are supposed to own the economy, but they go and say, please give us 25%? Have we what just become black is that? partners? Is that what we are as black people not, in our own Not economy. only black partners, black minority partners. So you, you go and you plead for to own a quarter mm -hmm. of your economy and you call that transformation. Give me a break. And that was Advocate Dalim Pofu. There'll be more on the hot seat come Thursday, 6.30 only on CNBC Africa. Until then, good evening.